today we want to actually talk about the sequential circuit and the most important element in sequential circuit, which is the flip-flop. So before I do that, so let I just need to talk about the different actually the logic circuits. So we actually already talk about the talk about the com my national versus which is today we want to talk about the sequential circuit so we already talked about the combinational circuit in previous chapter and uh, here I just want to highlight that again. So as you already know, whenever you talk about the combinational circuit, which is combinational circuit, so just that I change the color. So it has actually has two features, right? So you already know about that. The first one is it is time independent, right? So it is time independent. So what it means, so that means it, the output that you have, they are not actually the output, not depend, depend depends on depends on previous previous inputs. Okay. So that means whatever you have as output in time n, so it's actually related to the inputs in time n, not the previous inputs. So we actually, whatever we have so far, all of them is combinational circuit, and the, the, all the times to the output in time n is related to the inputs in exactly the same time, which is n. But in the sequential, actually, circuit, it is totally is the different thing, okay? So, in the other side, you have sequential. In the sequential, we actually definitely it's depend on the time. So, so how you could keep the time? So, you usually have one another input, which we call that clock. It's actually clock keep the time. So, I write it's actually dependent on time cells on clock or time clock cycle as well as previous inputs okay or you could say past inputs Okay, so that means in the sequential circuit, definitely you should have one input, which is all the time it is the clock, and it's, it's keep the time. Why? Because the output in time n is related to the previous input. So that means somehow you should actually keep the time and know what is the time in n, what actually the input in n minus one, n minus two, and n minus three. So one of the features of the sequential circuits, definitely you have one input as a clock or clock pulse, which is actually keep the time. So the, the most important actually component in the sequential circuit is the flip-flop. To see what is the flip-flop and 
how Fiddy fill up works. So Fiddy fill up. So we start actually with the SR free fill up and see what is the we have different type of the free fill up today. We actually review the all different type of the free fill up and see how they works. So I actually start with SR. So SR is the name of one free fill up. Let you see what it means and how it works. So the SR free flop. So the SR free flop actually is one module. Like this module that you see here. So if you consider that as a module. So it actually has three input that you expect. One we call that S. Another one is R. So as you expect in any element in the sequential, you should expect to see the clock. Usually we show the clock with CK or CP. The both actually has the same meaning. So inside, usually you have, you say this is one S, this is one R, and this is usually you say this is CK one, okay? So three inputs, and let us see how many outputs we have. We have two outputs. One is the QN, and the next one is the not of the QN, which is we show with QN bar. So see, because this is the sequential circuit, we actually have these N here. So that means we are telling this is the Q, because that's a sequential. This is the Q in time N, okay? This is a Q in time N. Usually in the inputs, we do the same thing. We say S in time N, R in time N, okay? Because that's the sequential, okay? So you could put N here or here, the both actually works. So we actually do that as a S, R, V, flop. So how it works, it is based on these tables that you see on the left side. So definitely the important feature is the CK or the clock. So you have two input, which is S in time N. See how I read that label S in time N. So R in time N. So you have Q in time N and also Q N prime or bar in time N. Okay. So I change the color. So definitely this is how it works. So whenever clock is zero, Okay, whenever clock is zero. So what is the clock? Clock usually is just this square wave, okay? So this is how you could keep the time, right? So this is all the time clock is this, which is we say is clock pulse. So you could consider as a n equals zero. So then whenever in the, you are in the second one, this is periodic, right? So this should be n one. So then in the next actually should be n equal to. Depend on the period of this actually pulse, you could actually change this time. So that means you are, whenever you have this pulse wave, you are able to know where you are in the time actually domain, right? Here I'm in the zero, here is one, here is two. Then if you should continue exactly somehow, you are able to keep the time. So back to the table of the SR free flop. Whenever it is a zero, see, whenever it is zero, no matter what is the R, no matter what is the S, that means they are don't K. The Q in time N is Q in time N minus one. So Q bar should be the same thing, N minus one bar. 
So, which we actually call this hold. This is a term that we use, hold. So that means whenever clock is zero, no matter what you have here in the S and R, so whatever you have in time N is your previous output. That means Q is N is the Q that you have in N minus one, which is somehow tells the flip-flop is some kind of the memory, right? Whenever you could remember what you had in N minus one. So this is kind of the memory, right? So see the next. So whenever it is one, so then the flip flop actually take a look to the take a look to the S and R. So definitely S R is two input. You should have four different cases: zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one. One is the four different cases could be happen. So whenever pulse is zero and your clock pulse is one, so you have this, the Q in time N is Q minus N minus one again, and the bar should be Q N minus one bar. So again, what happened here is the hold, we call that hold app. So whenever this is zero, this is one, this is actually the time that flip-flop resets. So see R is one reset, what's the, What's actually meaning of the reset? That means Q is uh, in time N is zero and it's not should be one. In this case, we say, okay, it's a reset. So whenever S is one and R is zero, that means it should be set. What's the meaning of the set? So that means the Q in time N is one. Definitely the not is zero. So then we call this actually set. And whenever you have these one one, we usually call based on the hardware that you have inside this unit. This is the case that you shouldn't use the SR flip flop in this actually mode. So that's what I just put here and say this is invalid. So you couldn't use this in this actually in this mode. So then you, you actually in the in the future, we will talk about the master step, which they fix this actually problem. But for now, so this flip flop actually works on these tables. So, so it's easy to remember. Whenever clock is zero, no matter what you have, you have hold. What's the meaning of the hold? Means Q in time N is Q N minus one. Somehow is some kind of the memory. So whenever you the clock is one so that means the sr works and take a look and see what you have for s if the both of them is zero this is the hold if the reset is one r is one the set is zero you actually reset which is the qn is zero is if it one zero you set which is means the qn should be one and is not is zero and one one is the case that we don't use in this case. So this is actually the table that explain how this flip-flop works. So if you are interested to know how you could make the flip-flop and what you have inside this based of the basic gates that we have, so you can actually make this the that unit with using actually two nodes. This is somehow this the inside of the inside of these unit, right? So here you have one and here, which is you connect to this pin. So the same thing, you have another and here, which is connected to this. These are the and. So that I write here because it is tough with this pin. And this is nor. These two is nor. So here you actually connect these two to each other and you give your C. CK. So this should be your S, this should be your R. And the one input of this connected to the output of that. So see, this is QN and this is QN bar. So this is actually connected to here. And this one is connected to here okay 
So if I put this inside one box, so this is what you actually have. So that means, again, similar with the whole things that we learn in this class. So the whole device that you actually make, so you actually you make them with using the basic gates that we have, okay? So this is SR. So this is inside this module, and just we need to actually know how these SR works based on these table. How we could use this? We could actually use this to make very interesting circuits, which we will talk about that later. For now, we just focus on different type of the flip-flop and how they work. So as usual, if you have any question, you could actually type on the chat box, okay? So any question about the SR? So let's go to the next, which is to see what we have for the next. So next is actually is JK. So let's see what is the JK flip flop. So the next actually type of flip flop is. Uh, JK flip flop. So flip flop. So similar with the similar with SR. First, we actually check how it works. So you consider as a module. You call, you call that JK flip-flop. So it actually has two input. You call that JN in time N. K in time N, as you expect, you need expect to see the clock pulse. And similar with this, or you have Q in time N as output and output in output bar in time N. Usually there is a dot here which shows this is active with the zero. So back to its actually table. So we actually have a C car. We have a J in time N. We have K in time N. We have Q in time N and Q N bar, okay? So to see how it works and what is the yeah maybe let's skip this like this. So yeah, similar with the SR, whenever this is a zero, no matter what is the J, no matter what is the K, you have the hold. So this is Q N minus one, and this would be Q N minus one bar. What we call this, we call this hold. So whenever the say K C or clock is one, it's actually take a look to see what you have as a J K. So J K actually is two input. You could have four different beat pattern. Whenever the boss is zero, so the Q in time N again is similar with the SR is N minus one bar, sorry, just N minus one, not no bar. So yeah, whenever, whenever this is zero, zero, this is just hold the Q in time N is the Q in time n minus one. It's bar, so the next should be q n minus one. Bar, again, this is the similar with the previous case, which is the old, okay? So no difference so far. So whenever the j is a zero and k is a one, you actually have reset. So this is zero, this is a one, then the case is reset. Whenever it is one and zero, so this is one and this is zero, we call that it is set. And see, whenever it is one, one, unlike the SR, it's not invalid. So it is actually, whenever it is one, one, we call that toggle. So let's see what's the meaning of the toggle. 
So toggle means whenever the boost is set, Q in time N is Q in time N minus 1, but it's bar. So that means it's somehow not whatever you have in the previous output. So the Q N bar should be not of this, so that means the Q Q N not should be Q N minus 1, which is the not of this should have this, okay? So this is actually the big difference, right? So that means that you get rid of the you get rid of these invalid case that we had, okay? So again, J is zero, K is one, reset. J is one, K is zero is set. Zero, zero is hold, one, one is toggle. Q in time N is Q N minus one. So is it easy to Remember, if you are curious how what you, what you have inside this and how you could make that, so here you have the inside that. So if you put to north like this, so this is actually is Q N. This is Q N bar. So you have here one and with three or so you actually connect this here so similar with the SR this is connected to here so this and again connected to here so similar to SR, this output is connected to here. So these two is connected to each other. You have this CK here. Yeah, see the difference actually comes here. This, you have one is one here, which is the J, N. So this is actually definitely, this is the K N, but see, this is the difference. So you have, this is actually three input. This is three input, actually, and which is the third one. See the third one? Third one actually connected to here. Okay. So similar with this, this actually connected to the U N okay. So if you actually make this circuit again, if you put that inside the box, definitely this is what we have as a jig. Even if you could you could test that, okay. You could actually give if you want to see exactly this is this. So you could give C P C K one, then give zero zero and see what you have here. Definitely you should get the same thing that you see in the state. So we don't need to actually remember what is the inside that we usually use this as a block and then we just need to know how it's work. Okay. So this is JK. So any question about this? So this is actually the JK. So let to see what should be actually the next. So the next actually here as you see in these two table that we have which is they work with the CK which is the clock pulse whenever this is zero and this is one. So we have some uh, flip-flops which we actually call them age trigger flip-flop. So they are you have SR age trigger and the JK age trigger. Let us see whenever it's, you say age trigger what it means. So I want to actually talk about the age trigger. Philip. So if you just give you an example which is on the on the SR. Remember, so this is what we actually had in the SR, right? I, I actually 
say we have CK, which is your clock, you have SN, you have RN, and you have two output, which is the QN, QN bar. So whenever you remember, this is exactly the same thing that we had today. So whenever it is actually is zero, so, so see, I'm just repeat exactly the same thing that you had here, okay? Whenever this is zero, it should be hold. Whenever it is one, hold, reset, reset, and set, okay? So I'm not going to actually the repeat that again. Just I need to talk about the CK, I'm writing the CK, okay? So here you have the similar things that you had for SR. So here the same table, okay, is the same table. So you actually say this is the hold, hold, exactly this, this table that you have, okay? So I want to just explain what's the meaning of the H3 game. So if this is the case, which is I explained already, so this is uh, our CK, right? This is our CK. So clock pops, right? So I just repeat that three times. One for each of these cases that I'm going to explain. So what we learned so far, we say, okay, CK is zero. So let's take a look to the S and S, no matter what they are. So you have QN and QN minus one. This is the prime of that. It's doing the whole, right? So the CK is zero, where is, if, if this is the CK, so where is the CK is zero? So definitely you check here, which is zero, whenever you are in this actually time interval, let's take a look, see what is the SR, depending on the input that you have, do a specific task, right? So that, that's what we have in this table. But in the age trigger, we have two type, two, two different type of the age trigger. So the first one is actually the rising age, Rising actually the age flip flop or the other one is falling age. So what is the falling and the rising compared with what we already have? So here, whenever you say not actually not age trigger, that means the normal one. So that means whenever you are zero, so that means here it's zero, right? Let's take a look to the input. So again, whenever this is one, it's not actually take a look to the, sorry, whenever it is one, it's actually take a look to the inputs. In the zero, it's actually is hold. So that means whenever here is zero, based off that table, no matter what you have here, you are on the hold, right? So whenever you are in zero, that means here is hold, here is hold, here is hold because the CK is zero. Whenever it's actually moved to the one, it's take a look to the actually, whenever it's one based off this table, it's take a look to the SR, depending on what you have on the SR input, is to this specific task. But in the rising age, so it's actually do the same thing, but this time it's not sensitive to the zero and one. This time it's sensitive to rising age. Where is the rising age in these pulse? Whenever it's moved to the as zero to one, it is the rising. So see, that means it's it's actually take a look to the inputs whenever you are on the rising age, that means in this time. What is the next rising age is here, whenever you move to the zero one. Where is the next is here. So that means I need to correct this table if this is a rising age. I'm telling whenever this is actually falling age, so see how I'm writing this. I say whenever this is the, if this is the rising age, so I'm talking about the rising age. So if this is the rising age, whenever you are actually is a down, it means the same with the zero. But whenever you actually, you are on the rising age on your clock pulse, it's actually take a look to the SR. So that means you replace zero with actually down age and the one with the actually rising age. So that means 
whenever you are here, no matter what you have on the SR, whenever you are in the rising age, it's actually take a look to the SR and do that specific tax. That means it's sensitive to the rising age. You have the opposite of that. You have the falling age. Where is the falling age here on this uh, pulse? So definitely this is actually one falling age. Whenever you actually fall from one to zero. Is this falling age? No. Here you move from zero to one. So the next falling age is here. Next falling age is here. Okay. So that means if this flip-flop is sensitive to the falling age, so that means whenever it's rising, no matter what you have in the SR, it's old. But whenever you are actually falling, it's take a look to the inputs, depending on what you have in the inputs, it's doing the set result or actually invalid case. So how we could actually represent that with the samples. So this is how you could represent the units. If this is a normal one, you say this is S. This is R, be careful. So see, nothing on the CK is a normal, nothing here. So you have QN, you have QN prime. That is exactly the same thing that you are used for the JK and also for this one, okay? So see, whenever you want to tell this is actually the rising age, so be careful how should change the sample. So see, this is, you want to say this is SR, so no change for S, no change for R, no change for QN, no change for QN bar. But see, you want to say this is actually rising age. So you have this CK here, but you put actually one triangle here so it tells this flip-flop actually is sensitive to the rising age so that means this should be the right actually table so whenever it's actually rising take a look to see what you have on the sr whenever it's actually falling it's actually all the time is the hold and see the falling age if you want to say flip-flop is a falling age okay so again, you have S, you have R, you have C, K, and you have Q, N, and you have Q, N prime. So see, whenever you want to, it says it's a falling age, you put this triangle here, and also you add one dot here. So dot triangle means this flip-flop is S, R, and it is falling a just one triangle one triangle here or arrow whatever you actually see so it should be rising age nothing on the cp c clock ck pins means normal that means it's sensitive to the zero one it is the same thing for jk for the jk is the same thing if the here you have nothing it is the jk that is sensitive to zero one so whenever you have this sensitive to the rising age, whenever you have dot this sign, it actually is falling age. And you actually know what's the difference between them. Okay? So any question? So let's to go to the uh, two. We have actually two more. So let's to go to the next type of the flip-flop. So today we just introduced this flip-flop in our next class. We actually see how you could make very cool circuits in with these actually flip-flop. So the next type is D-type. So or the flip-flop. So similar with that others. So so D flip flop somehow is the the D flip flop is the JK. So if you have one JK flip flop and you actually have one J right, and you have one pin for K right, you already know that. So if you actually do this, if you actually take a knot of the J and connect this to the K 
Um, this should be your CK, right? CK, and you call this D, okay? Then put everything inside the box. So again, this is QN, this is QN bar. So then I, if I put these stuffs in the box and I could call that D flip flop, okay? So that means here, if I want to show the D flip flop, I just say this. So the D flip flop, D flip flop, how many inputs you should have? See, just two, because J is not to the K, there is no K. So you actually say this is D, this is a lock pulse, this is QN, and this is QN prime, okay? So usually you should have dot here, which shows this is the prime and it's active with not, okay? Don't forget that. So, yeah, here is the same thing here. I forgot to put these dots all the time for the not you have this circle which is tells which is tells you the q prime not these pins is active with the zero so if i yeah i put in the jig so yeah this is the so let to see how it's worked so far we know the is a jk which is j the not of the j connected to the to the k so then how it's work based off these new situation so definitely you need the ck and d you just have two input so similar with the others so the ck could be zero one it is a normal flip-flop not right not h trigger flip-flop so whenever it is zero no matter what you have on the d so you have here qn you and mine sorry you have q you have you have qn and the next one is qn bar or prime right qn bar or prime so if you you could check with the table of the jk but usually we remember just this so whenever it is uh, uh, zero so definitely it's hold so that means Q n minus one here, Q n minus one prime. It's actually is hold. Whenever this is one and one, these one input, right? So it could be zero, it could be one. Whenever that is the zero, you have zero one. We call this reset. And whenever one is one, it's actually is set. I could remember zero is reset the free flop and the one set the free flop. Okay. So similar with this, same similar with if you want to make a D flip flop with the H trigger, definitely if, if this is your CK D flip flop, if you want to sell these D is actually the rising age, you need to use this. If you want to tell it is sensitive to the Falling age, your clock should be like this. Okay, so this is similar with the old order. So whenever you use this rising age, falling age, this is a normal sensitive to zero and one, nothing here. Okay, so this is actually for a D flip flop, and the last one will be the the last one that we have is T flip flop. So let to see what is the T flip flop. So the next is T, which is the fourth one, the flip flop. So the T actually is the JK again. So this is actually a JK flip flop. So consider one JK flip flop. This is J. This is J. This is actually K. But here in the D, you not the J connect to the K. Here you directly connect this to this, and there is no not. So you actually keep as a clock, and you call this T. So definitely you should have QN. 
here you should have q n prime. So that may be equal to this. You could say this is just t flip flop. How many inputs? You have one which is t. You have one c k. You have one q n, and you have one q n prime. Okay. How it works? So definitely you need to uh, you need a table. So these t somehow you could use the table of the j k and understand how it works. But usually we remember this, which is because that's very easy. So you actually have the CK, CK or pulse, then you have T in time N. So definitely you have Q in time N and you have Q N prime, right? So whenever this is zero, no matter what you have as a T, you have the whole. So this should be Q N minus one. It should be N minus one prime. We call this whole, okay? So whenever this is one, it's actually take a look to your t. t is one input could be zero one. So whenever this is zero, it's actually it is actually is a hold. So that means it is again q n minus one. This is q n minus one prime. So again, this is hold. Whenever it is one, it is toggle. So toggle means q in time n is q n minus one not, and the next one should be n minus one prime, which is doing the snowball. So we call this actually talk, right? So how we could remember just whenever it is zero hold, whenever one is toggle. What's the meaning of toggle? Qn is Qn minus one prime, okay? So you could actually easily remember these two tables. For D, zero is reset, one is set. For T, zero is hold. One is toggle, T actually used for hold and toggle, D goes for the set and reset.